executive director of the Montana Democratic Party. Okay, uh, the reason I called, uh, Nancy, I told you earlier, was about the George Oshensky article that appeared in Lee newspapers over the weekend. Uh, I think it was entitled Lois Lane versus Hillary Clinton or something like that. And yep. r- regarding what happened, uh, according to Margot Kidder, uh, and I'm not exactly sure how reliable of a source that is, but he uh, he did an entire article about uh, what happened with money being funneled through various state uh, uh, Democratic uh, uh, committees, uh, or campaigns rather, into the Hillary Victory Fund and kind of raised a, a few eyebrows around here in Missoula. And uh, after I contacted Mr. Modell and and uh, and the Secretary of State's office, they sent me to you. So I was yeah, wondering. So here uh, you have it. Yes. Yeah, so, let me explain this. This is um, it's not new. Um, actually, back in '08, when then Senator Barack Obama and um, Hillary Clinton were in a primary, um, the Democratic National Committee sets up funds. Um, and and both in that case to raise money for the Democratic National Committee, and it's it's a partnership, if you will, with states. So um, uh, it's not unusual; it's been going on. And this year, um, only Hillary Clinton's campaign took advantage of this what we call joint fundraising. Um, and but both uh, Senator Sanders and then Governor O'Malley also had the opportunity to participate with states. Uh, but neither of them have called um, Montana, so only the Hillary people did. Um, so here's the deal. Montana receives no money, absolutely none. The money is raised for the Democratic National Committee. It's part of the 50-state state strategy to strengthen um, parties across the country. And at the end of the day, at the end of the nomination process, after one or the other is nominated, then those dollars are used to help parties uh, state parties and to help um, elect down ballot candidates. So, um, one, I take a lot of issue with um, uh, Miss Kidder's um, article n- number one uh, because in the her original article, the Montana Democratic Party does not take any money. It does not influence our super delegates. Um, it again is part of a process that was open to Senator Sanders. Governor O'Malley and Hillary Clinton, and she is the only one that partnered to strengthen the parties across the country. Okay, now, I guess my my question is for someone who is not necessarily very learned in uh, in the way that all this all this. Uh, let's just put let's just say that with all the light that's been shining on dark money, especially by Mr. Modell and various other folks over the last couple of years now, uh, whenever we hear of money being funneled from one one end to another. The first thing we think of, aha, is this dark money. So if perhaps if, if you could explain <laughs> no, the difference. No, it is not, because it's all fully reported. Okay. Dark money is when you don't know who gave the money or how the money was spent. This is the case where we have to report the name of the donor that gave the party money. Um, and, and in essence, our reports also reflect how the money is spent. So this is not any way connected at all to dark money. It's when people that come into the state and do not disclose who they are spending either on behalf or against a, a particular candidate. And in Montana, we have now, under the Governor Bullock's leadership, have one of the strongest um, disclosure acts in the country, which says you're going to spend money, you've got to tell us who you are, your name, where you live, and then how much money you're spending on behalf or against a particular candidate. So when, when people bring up the, the, uh, the question of you know, money in politics in general, and there just seems to be so much of it, it really is the mother's milk of politics, I guess. Um, do you ever see a way that this sort of thing won't be necessary anymore, where we, you have to raise money this way and... Uh, going back and forth rather than as some sort of governmental process where people could just donate and every, each candidate gets an equal share of the pie? Or, or is that something that probably will never happen? Well, first, Citizens United needs to be overturned because that's where we saw the cap being taken off of unlimited money being spent um, on on campaigns. So that was a wrong decision by the United States Supreme Court. And it, it is. It is obscene the kinds of money that that, that door, when that was opened, uh, has led to. But, yes, but, but, it's, but, it, but it's available to both sides, right? Absolutely. 
And so if that's the rules we're all playing by, you know, right now, but I think that as Democrats, we believe Citizens United should be overturned. There is too much money being spent in um, on politics. There is, to your second point, you could have public financing. Now, that's going to have to be by the vote of the people, that they say, yeah, we want um, a public financing where um, it's actually paid for and there are very specific limits. Um, it's something that has been discussed but has never <laughs> never been passed, either at the federal level or at the state level. Sure. But I think the key here is um, disclosure. Um, so, you, you know, you give your name, give your address, Tell us who you are when you're spending money. And in Montana, we have a law that does uh, require that. Is is there a way to find out who the individuals or groups are that gave money to uh, the Montana Democratic Party that was uh, funneled in, into the uh, national campaign? Absolutely, because, it, again, it's fully disclosed. Those okay. donors have to give us their name, their address, um, uh, their occupation. All of that is required. So it, it's not like... Um, you know, that there, that this is somehow not um, fully disclosed. They disclose the names of people that give, give money to the Montana Democratic Party, to the National Party, as they have to do to the Republican Party, um, so it's not unusual. So this business that it's just money that comes in and we don't know where it comes from is a bogus argument. We know exactly who donates money. And there are limits. For example, a PAC can only give $5,000 to the Democratic Party. It is illegal to take corporate money to the Democratic Party. And so we, you know, we follow the law, and, um, and it is all fully disclosed. So I think there's a, here's again where I take issue is it's so where money is being accepted from people that we don't even know or entities that we don't know. No, we know exactly who donates money, and it is all reported both to the Federal Election um, uh, Committee, and it is also uh, reported here in Montana to uh, Commissioner of Political Practices, John Modell. So so I could call Mr. Modell's office and get a list of those names and the amounts and that sort of thing, right? For the state, for the state for the contributions, state. yes. Yeah. So, yes, and we have to file that as a party. We okay. have to say this is where, um, uh, for state candidates, and then at the federal le- level, you get that from the Federal Election Commission because it has to be filed there at the federal level. So Mr. Modell doesn't keep track of the federal ones. It would just be, I think, sure. he keeps the state, the federal keeps the federal, and all you have to do is either go on their website and you can find it. Okay. Now, one more quick question. I know you're very, very busy. Uh, uh, is it possible for you to tell me uh, now, or or perhaps maybe you'd have to wait, If is the Montana Democratic Party uh, standing behind Hillary Clinton or behind Senator... Uh, Senator Sanders. Yeah, the party doesn't take a position, nor do, um, uh, it's been tradition in this state, I, uh, that the superdelegates, and that's our, uh, so uh, you understand who the superdelegates are, um, that is the national committee man, national committee woman from Montana. It is our chair and vice chair of our party, and it happens to be the two statewide elected officials in Senator Tester and in Governor Bullock. So we get 27 delegates that will go to the national convention. Nobody has declared and will not until after Montana uh, votes on June 7th. Um, and then we choose delegates. So we will have, um, by their peers, there will be 21 delegates chosen, apportioned, apportioned. So let's assume that Bernie Sanders, Senator Sanders wins Montana. Then the, um, the delegates are selected, apportioned on the number of voters in the primary and how many he got versus what Secretary Clinton would have gotten. Right. Um, and then your superdelegates um, usually go to the convention and they make their determination um, at that point. But no one will, neither the party staff, um, uh, you know, disclose or indicate a preference here until after Montana and, uh, Montana Democrats have voted on June 7th. But the superdelegates are not bound by the popular vote. That is correct. 